Before we begin, a very big thank you to Aiden V, Stephen H, and Eric R. They are my latest patrons, and they are helping to support this channel and make sure it can continue to thrive and grow. Thank you very much. If you would like to do the same and literally force me to get more videos put out, then you can do it over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Thank you, and please enjoy. Oh, hi. I was just sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner. You know, kind of a solitary thing here, but I still like to go fancy, you know, go all out. And this year, I spared no expense. Only the finest foods shall do. Sit. Join me. I'm just about to get started. Okay, I admit I'm on a bit of a diet, so the portions are small, but... Don't let the appearance fool you. Like so many other things on this channel, these happen to be more than meets the eye. I don't know how I did that. Something I never get the chance to talk about on this channel are Happy Meal toys, which is weird because I'm nostalgic for so many of them. From flippable cars to dress-up chicken McNuggets, Flintstone houses to the only ninja power coins you could get until 2017. I had so many of these, and I may never remember them all, but I have very clear and fond memories of McDonald's take on shape-changing robots from the 80s. Changeables, also known as McRobots. These were released in 1987 with two clear intents. One, cash in on the success of Transformers and GoBots, and two, avoid paying royalties to a popular kid's property for a month. For a concept that was made simply as a cost-cutting measure, these are surprisingly good Happy Meal toys. We're going to look at these one by one, but there are a lot of them, so we're going to keep it short and sweet. Even the ones that aren't ice cream cones. We start with a quarter pounder with cheese. It's molded and painted to look delicious, with its toppings hanging out in a sesame seed bun. This is the prime example of the changeables, right down to the transformation. Just lift the bun and rotate the arms forward. Most are this simple. The robot has an unfortunate gap due to the engineering, but otherwise looks interesting. The robot sculpt on these do a good job of not looking too Transformer or GoBot. He's got little hands molded in, but I do question the screw in his mouth that means he's always screaming. How about some Chicken McNuggets, or rather, the foam box they came in? Yes, if you think McDonald's is unhealthy now, we used to eat it out of styrofoam. Credit to the sculptor who made sure the sauce compartment was included. Same transformation, though I guess on this container opening the lid is pretty much expected. This bot got a midsection, hollow, but at least it's not missing. Blue chest again, but this time a red face and some really angry looking eyes. Though I like that they're gaps, so at the right angle the yellow shines through. This one shows his hollowness, so he does come off a bit cheaper looking than some of the others. Next, the Egg McMuffin, giving some color variety with its gray muffin bun. Though without the toasting, it really doesn't look too appetizing, does it? Transformation is essentially the same. Have to pull this one up a bit first, but strangely enough, it doesn't come up all the way. Instead, it stays hunched over, like this is the old man of the group, which I guess makes sense for all the gray on him. Blue chest and red face again, but I do like the head sculpt on this one. Has more depth and dimension than the others. Still stuck in the same engineering, but he does feel different at least. We move on to the milkshake, though I don't know how you're supposed to tell what's inside the cup. Strangely enough, this is the only one that's stickered rather than tampographed, because I guess they didn't know how to tampo on a curve yet. He transforms a little differently, with his whole front half folding all the way down, so he's really tall and fully formed. I like the hat he ends up having, too. If there's a downside, it's the stubby little arms that barely reach past his chest. Outside of that, it definitely stands out from the rest of the set as the most complete transformer of them all. Ah, the Big Mac. As a kid, this was always the Optimus Prime of the group, but it's their signature item, so I guess it has to be, and here it's obviously one of the bigger food modes. Lift bun, rotate arms forward. Anyone else getting bored of that yet? Robot mode is a weird one here. Most of his body is still Mac, so he's got some kind of Professor X or Jack in the Box thing going on. Your pick. I like how solid the robot mode is, but we have blue body and yellow face again, which makes me think back to the quarter pounder and realize it's not Optimus Prime. I have Hot Rod and Rodimus Prime here. Finally, a large side of fries. 
I like the sculpting on this one. Something about the random heights and cuts on the fries makes it a little more believable. Fortunately, the transformation also sets itself apart. Still lift up and rotate arms forward, but it has more use of the mass this time, and he gets legs to pull down. The rich blue face on this one really stands out with a deep sculpt to the details. I also like the exposed hands. It makes gaps in the food mode, but I like how complete of a robot this one is. Hands, legs, defined head, probably my favorite out of the series. This is the set that tends to fuel people's nostalgia, and I think it's because of the dedication to the robot aesthetic that's strongest in this series. These felt the most like McDonald's Transformers while still having their own identity. They were so popular, they had to go for another round. So in 1989, they did just that. The new Changeables did a Mega Man 2, expanding from six robots to eight, and they gave more emphasis on giving them actual identities as well as being more kid-friendly in nature. Hey, hey, I ordered soft serve. True to any Transformer line, we got repaints. The large fries is now known as Fry Force. Aside from a sky blue face, he has dark blue eyebrows and red highlights for his eyes and mouth, which I think goes against the friendly concept for this series. He gets painted hands too, which is nice, but they show in his food mode. The Big Mac is now Macro Mac, and has a more teal color to his robot mode, along with extra pink paint apps to his face and hands. The burger's identical, he just gets to be more colorful than before. For the new molds, let's start with the Quarter Pounder box, dubbed Galacta Pounder, also the name of my next indie band. Not much to say, this is a box with a logo printed on top, and transforming it is basically just open the box and point the arms forward. Not much different than Series 1. Excuse the sun damage on mine, making him more greenish than he should be, but the bot itself is still a pretty happy looking guy, and the cold color tones really go well together. I do wonder if the round parts were intended to be eyes, or if it was the sunken in parts that the paint has ignored. In contrast, let's go really different. It's supposed to be a small soda, but how would you tell it apart from a milkshake? Crypto Cup is pretty unassuming, just your standard cup shape, but the transformation is genuinely unique, rotating on a vertical axis to open up, revealing the face and letting the arms rotate up. It puts the arms at a weird angle, but it's a pretty inventive transformation for a Happy Meal toy. It's a really colorful face design that reminds me of some cartoon characters that were just a face on a screen, even though it is all sculpted. Really unique one. Then there's C2, the cheeseburger that's only half explosive. In contrast to the Quarter Pounder, this is just a humble cheeseburger, no extra toppings or seeds on the bun. The transformation is as simple as opening up the bun in three directions, revealing a really different bot. The chest doesn't look like a robot as much as it does a Doug Funny sweater vest. With the outstretched arms, the bowl cut looking helmet, and the big smile, he looks like the little kid of the group, which I guess makes sense for a cheeseburger you'd get out of a Happy Meal. Now how about a small order of fries named Frybot? Nothing says for kids quite like a grease soaked paper bag full of french fries. At least the tampo on this one makes it a little more interesting. But if we want to get interesting, we can transform it and behold the monstrosity that is Frybot. Look past the garish colors and realize it's not that he has no arms, he has no legs. The things he stands on are sculpted like fists. And if that wasn't weird enough for you, he has a working jaw that hangs really low, he has a sculpted tongue, and there's a screw in his throat. It's a horror show. I like this one. This series, our breakfast is hotcakes. Robo Cakes, yes, that's the name, could have just had anything stamped on the top of its food mode and it would probably pass for that. His transformation feels like Series 1, but luckily it's not just opening the box, and it results in a pretty solid and convincing robot. The purple and green with the white gives me a few Joker vibes, and like most of the Series 2 sculpts, he's far happier looking than the original lineup. If the green is a mouth, I can see lips sculpted in, but the brighter paint is pulling my eyes, so it's a little confusing. At long last, we have a dessert item. Turbo Cone, the ice cream cone. That'll tell you how old these toys are, the ice cream machine still worked. Though I don't think they painted the logos on the cones at the time. This one is probably the most disappointing, since nothing really transforms, the robot parts just stick out of the cone. 
and the robot isn't great since they're trying too hard to make the design look female. It comes across as a little too silly even for this series. Credit where it's due, they made a transforming female toy long before Hasbro ever did it. Overall, we got a lot more transformation variety in this series. Some hits, some misses, it's a pretty even batch. The happier robot aesthetic I think takes away some of their original identity, but that's more personal preference than anything. They still manage to be fun toys. The following year, it was time for round three, and just as Transformers would soon learn, the future was in beasts. Dinosaurs were huge at the time, and Transformers weren't. So McDonald's changed things up. The new McDino changeables turned into cartoonish dinosaurs rather than robots, and while a bunch of returning food items were on the menu, there are eight completely new toys. Well, except for one. The ice cream cone was remolded into McDino cone, with an identical food mode and a very happy blue dinosaur being the character. At the very least, there's less hollow parts showing this time around, but again, it's the least interesting of the batch. Let's look at the most familiar food first, starting with the Big Macosaurus Rex. From outward appearance, it's pretty similar to the original Big Mac, except for the suspicious orange hinges in the bun. Thankfully, the transformation is new, but still pretty simple, revealing an orange... T-Rex? He's got a horn, so I don't think this is scientifically accurate. He has a tail though, so he's got that going. This is the aesthetic these were going for, people. Bright, cartoony dinosaurs. Just what you want food to transform into. The large fries are back, looking very similar, but with a name like Fryceratops, you know there's a catch. Again, this is a pretty complete transformation. Legs, head, tail, and a fairly complete... Dino? Like, I, I mean, it's supposed to be a dino, but the name is based on Triceratops, and he has a lot more than three horns. I do love how the tail also has fries sculpted in. He looks like some living rock dog in a red sweater, which is kind of adorable in a weird way. If we really want a poorly fit name, meet tri -shake Again, I can't tell it's a shake. tri -soda -tops is a far better pun. Like the original, the transformation involves unfolding it vertically, but we also flip the head and tail out here. So, people, can you tell me what's wrong here? Yup, not a Triceratops in any way. I also don't like how they just sculpted a pink dinosaur inside the cup instead of transforming the cup into something. It's a shell former, and it feels like it doesn't follow the spirit of the toy line. The McNuggets return as McNuggetsosaurus, yeah, they're really not trying on the names here. It's a foam box again, no sauce cup included this time, so it's just the tampo telling me what it is. This one's aquatic, flipping out flippers along with the head and tail, creating something of a dopey looking turtle dino, which is a good call. The yellow and green work well, and the box passes for a shell. Plus, I'm horribly biased towards turtles, so I'm going to call this one one of the better in the series. The Quarter Pounder with Cheezosaur. I mean, at the very least, I don't have to waste time telling you what the food is supposed to be. It's back to the look from the original lineup, outside the box, and still making me hungry. Transforming this one is interesting. It does it all on its side, pulling chunks of burger patty out. It's a weird one again, very thin head, only two legs, and flat on its left side. It's at least unique. I can see a lot liking this one just for being so silly. Hotcakes Adactyl. At least it's not another Osaur. Though I guess this one couldn't be that now that I think of it. Again, it's a box with a stamp on it. However, the transformation sets this one apart. The entire box opens up from the back to form wings and show the tail. And once the head's flipped out, you have a pretty complete transformation that uses most of the bulk of the toy. This was my favorite McDino as a kid, probably because it reminded me of Laserbeak, but it's certainly the most complete transformation of this series. And finally, a brand new item, the Happy Meal Odon. Took them three series to figure out they could put a Happy Meal inside of a Happy Meal. How meta. It's the standard classic box, bright red with the logos on the side and the golden arches on top. Transforming is, naturally, pretty simple. Just three parts to flip over to get into dino mode. 
The dopey aesthetic again comes across pretty hard here, and you kind of have to look for the beast parts through the box shell. It's not very obvious apart from the head, which I think is because this is the only dino whose animal parts are the same color as the food items. Only the little claws got painted. This set is definitely more diverse in transformations, but I think it lost something by going so cartoonish and completely ditching the robotic elements. Some of them are surprisingly neat, but this batch I just can't get into as much. After this, McDonald's started releasing real Transformer toys, starting with Beast Wars, and the changeables were lost to the ages. Until recently, that is. For the 40th anniversary of the Happy Meal, a ton of retro figures came back for a five-day promotion, including two changeables, and to my surprise, they changed them. I mean, they are based on classic changeables, but they are actually remade from the ground up. One was the Happy Meal Odon, whose new features aren't as noticeable, but oh boy, is the brighter red plastic. Small details include shadowed logos, smaller feet, less screws in assembly, and more even sculpting for the lines on the neck. The hamburger is the biggest surprise because changeables never had one. They're all versions of cheeseburgers, so technically it's new. It uses the robot and transformation of the quarter pounder, but he has no cheese or sesame seeds molded in. There's more structural changes to this one. It's a tad smaller. The torso details have been reworked some, and the inside is cleaner. Also, the face is painted and the chest is molded color. The reverse is true for the original. Between the two, they're not quite as solid as the originals. Thinner plastic, softer molding, less screws in construction, but the paint is cleaner since Toy Tech has improved despite higher production costs. Considering the US released 17 figures in this assortment and they were only available for five days, these two are going to be among the rarest changeables, so hope you got lucky. Though if we want to talk rare changeables, there's the overseas variants I just learned about. Some are simple, they changed a tampograph or altered a color, but two are noteworthy. One was apparently in the UK, where RoboCakes was turned into a yellow Big Breakfast meal box. The other was in Australia, where the milkshake was remolded into something more akin to the Series 2 bots and got a lot more paint. I wish I had more than images to show for these, I'm still trying to dig these variants up. It's been a fun adventure, reconnecting with something that I've had so much nostalgia for for so long. Changeables were honestly one of the best things they ever put into a Happy Meal. That includes the food. And McDonald's seems to be aware of it, given the extra promotion they did for the new Changeables for the 40th anniversary. Though it does make me wonder why we never got any more if these were so popular. I mean, when the Transformer movies were huge, they could have capitalized on that. Do some new food items. Release a villain faction for the Changeables. Well, wishful thinking, right? I mean, no toy line can live forever.